What is the one test that I recommend every patient with digestive health symptoms do? Today we're going to keep it nice, short, and sweet. We are talking about the one very specific test that I'll recommend to a patient who comes to me seeing me for digestive health symptoms. And it does not matter. It could be bloating, distension, gas, burping, reflux. It could be abdominal pain. It could be loose watery bowel movements. It could be constipation, incomplete bowel movements. Any digestive symptom under the sun, I will recommend the same test. Thankfully, you can do it at home and thankfully it's free. And I would highly, highly recommend tracking this if there are issues with, drum roll, <laughs> your bowel transit time, also known as gut transit time. And so patients can understandably be a little bit confused by this. They say, look, I'm having watery bowel movements three, four times a day. Obviously my transit time's quick. I'm flushing things out of my body. And that may be the case, but we don't know until we test mouth to toilet bowl and you will be surprised. I was definitely surprised. I had one patient, and I learned this lesson hard, when we finally got down to testing the transit time, like I say, it's free and easy to do at home. It's not, it's not a difficult test or expensive test. Hallelujah, some testing is expensive. We found that even though he was having watery bowel movements multiple times a day, it was still taking seven days for food to track through his digestive system. No wonder he was so symptomatic. So what is fast, what is slow? It's definitely a gray area. It definitely differs depending on um, patient population and ethnicity and diet. You know, all these things kind of play a role. Exercise is really huge for transit time. Between about 14 hours to 24 hours, ideally, we want you passing food through your digestive tract within 24 hours. And I'll even push that out to about 36 hours. I know that's a little bit controversial. Some of my colleagues might say, man, you gotta pull that into 24 hours. I've found right at about that 36 hour mark, that's where we start to see improvements anything beyond that and you might even be a little bit extra conservative and say 48 hours or longer two days so how do you do it that's the big question it's pretty straightforward i, I initially recommend a tablespoon of sesame seeds in a glass of water don't chew it drink it back make a little kind of note on when you consumed it if you have bowel movements in the morning then i would generally consume it in the morning to give you that optimal timeline so you can clear it within that 24 hours you know the next the next morning maybe 24 hours the big piece here and this isn't something to ignore this is a really important piece a pearl could be does it come through over multiple bowel movements and i got a little bit kind of tripped up by this initially a patient said look it's 24 hours, I'm, I'm great, we can move on, that's not my problem. I said, okay, great, you know, no worries, let's, let's treat. Didn't get great results. I said, look, let's test your transit time again, but don't forget to keep checking those bowel movements until you stop seeing the sesame seeds. No problem, do it. Comes back, yep, 24 hours, you know, a good chunk of sesame seeds. The next bowel movement, more sesame seeds. 24 hours later, so that's three days now, a really big kind of chunk of those sesame seeds, and then I kept seeing them for the whole week, seven days long. And so globally, when we look at all that data, that is extremely slow transit time, and it's going to be a huge, huge, huge treatment aim to focus on. We gotta speed that up to get better. Bowel transit time, gut transit time, mouth to toilet bowl, such valuable data. Do it if you're dealing with any digestive health symptoms. If it's slow, focus on speeding up. We are gonna be talking about that in a future video, so be sure to check back then.